Hi guys, welcome back to our series on the six daily habits that are gonna change your life. I really hope you enjoyed last week's episode where we talked about breathing. And I guess if you didn't see that video, please check it out. That's on this YouTube page. It's on our channel, the Momentum Strength and Wellness channel. Um, if you did watch it, I really hope that you, at the very least, started to pay attention to how you're breathing. And ideally, I hope that you started to fix it a little bit. I hope you started breathing through your nose a little better. And I hope you started to feel some of those benefits that I was talking about. Um, today, what we're going to do is talk about habit number two. Um, the title, Eat Real Food. And I know that the discussion on diet and nutrition is incredibly confusing. I think it's probably confusing on purpose. I think that the people that are making it confusing probably benefit from people being confused and dependable and sick. Um, and that's something we're gonna get into at another day because I want this to be a little bit more of a big picture thing. But I know nutrition is something people wanna talk about because people constantly ask me. They're like, oh, you're a personal trainer. What do you think about you know keto? What do you think about paleo? What do you think about vegan? I watched this documentary on Netflix and I'm gonna change the way I eat because of it. What do you think? about this. And there's so many fads and trends and dogmas. There's so much information, conflicting information. You hear something's healthy one day, the next week you hear it's not healthy. You don't know who to trust and I and trust it's it's confusing and it's complicated. But I want what I want to do today is sort of pull back and look at the big picture. Like yes, it's confusing. Yes, there's tons of options. Uh, seems kind of never ending and it seems like we can't find the right answer but if you look at the big picture it's going to make a little bit more sense to focus on eating re eating real food as opposed to you know fake food and junk food so let's think you know quality first and when i say real food i mean plants and animals the reason i say that is the way humans have evolved, or just the fact that humans have evolved over millions of years to basically be hunters and gatherers, find food, to find plants that they can eat, to find, you know, to forage in the woods for fruit and vegetables and, you know, mushrooms and that kind of stuff, and to hunt and to kill animals and eat their flesh. That's what a human is supposed to eat. That's the human diet. So it took you know, hundreds of millions of years to develop this way of eating. And then about 10,000 years ago, we start farming. And that's, that changes the way we get our food. But that's only 10,000 years ago. And that might sound like a long time, but if you look at the entire course of human history, it's such a small percentage. It's a fraction of 1%. It's nothing. So for the most part, we probably haven't even evolved to handle actually farming agriculture and eating grains in the quantity that we do and eating, you know, the foods in the quantity that we do prepared the way that we do. So that's why I say like the common sense approach is to simplify your diet to just eating plants and animals in as close to their natural state as possible. Cause like I said, 10,000 years is a blip on the human radar. And then when you look at the last 60 years, the exponential growth of junk food in the modern you know, Western diet is ridiculous. It's, we are constantly bombarded with so much crap that literally is not fit for human consumption. Like you look at the 60s and first off, like commercial airline became a thing. Like all of a sudden we could fly food from anywhere in the world to your doorstep. So we're not, we're not used to having the variety of food and that's already overwhelming. Like if, you, if you're talking about you know, hunters, early man, there were a few foods they could eat in an area, depending on time of the year. Like there might be hardly anything. It's like you, can, you kill an animal and maybe there's not even plants or fruit, like vegetables and fruit that you can get for that period of the year and then a few that grow in the area. But we're used to eating a very, very minimal diet and then all of a sudden you can eat anything you want and you can have, you know, American Western diet food for breakfast and you can get Mexican food for lunch and Chinese food for dinner that literally did not exist until very, very recently. But in addition to that, in addition to having just all this variety, 
we also have added so many things to our, I guess we'll say our pantry. Like we've added so much food to the possibilities because in the 60s, you also had, you know, the sort of the development and marketing, most, most important, of foods. So you have company, you have these corporations hiring scientists to design artificial things that are hyper palatable and trick the human brain into not only thinking their food and eating them, but not being able to stop. These are highly addictive foods. Like you look at Doritos, which is a great example where it's like all of a sudden, I think it was in the 60s, this chip, this processed grain thing that's sort of similar to like a Mexican tortilla chip is flavored, like nacho flavored. So it's like, it looks orange. So why you first you have this highly processed thing that probably isn't fit for consumption. And then you're going to add fake coloring and flavoring to make it taste like cheese or, you know, somewhat resemble cheese to tell your body that you're, you're tricking, you're eating this thing, tricking your brain into thinking that it's getting all these great nutrients because the combination of fat and sugar is highly addictive. And then they're marketing, they're bombarding you with all, in all the newspaper ads and it's in commercials. And you're, you see this thing and it's like, oh, I saw a commercial, it must be food, I can eat this. So now like as that's grown, you have, so you have these companies making hyper palatable, addictive food. And then you're bombarded with it everywhere. You walk into the grocery store and you have to walk through a maze of all these things that are telling you, oh, eat this, eat this, this is the bright colors and it's, the packaging is addictive. Kids are addicted to it. You get it at an early age. And all like all these things, these artificial sweeteners, artificial flavoring, artificial coloring, your body does not know what those are. So it's kind of tricking the brain into thinking, oh, this is this kind of resembles something that you know about from nature, but it's not what it is. And your the reaction is inflammation. The reaction is that once it actually gets into your system, your body's trying to fight it off and kill it. And it's like trying to kill this infection of your diet. So you're constantly at war on the inside. So it's like, how can you get a step ahead if you're always fighting the thing that's supposed to nourish you. Like what is food? Why do we eat? The common idea is that food equals energy. And that's partially true. That is a thing that is an, an aspect of food. But that's also like just looking at it that simply is sort of like this slave factory worker mindset of humans are machines. So let's put calories in so we can get calories out. Let's give them a thousand calories of slop so that they can go to work, punch the time card and give us a thousand calories of production and make the factory owner happy. But humans aren't machines. It's not like you're filling your gas tank and then, you know, emptying out the energy and then filling your gas tank again. Humans aren't machines. Humans are beings. That's why they say human being. It, it, we are, you know, we are a thing, a living thing. And food is not just our energy source. Food is also information. Food is what we're using to signal to our genes how they should work. Um, Dr. Mark Hyman, I believe, has a great quote where he says that genetics are genetics load the gun, but nutrition pulls the trigger. Lifestyle and nutrition pulls the trigger. Meaning you might have a disease that runs in your family. You have the gene, the genetic makeup to carry this thing, whether it's you know, Alzheimer's or diabetes or depression or the, anything. But your lifestyle and specifically your diet are going to mandate if that gene turns on or not. So if you're putting good things into your body, there is a significantly less, less likely possibility that you're going to get that disease, whether you have the gene or not. So food, like I said, like if, if we look at it like a car, you put gas tank, gas in your tank, you empty the tank and then you put more gas in. Food, but the car doesn't constantly rebuild itself. A car just burns the fuel and then you fill it back up. Humans are constantly, we're clearing out damaged cells and repairing them with new cells, building new cells daily. 
and food is also broken down and then that becomes the building blocks of our new cells. So if you're putting shit into your body, then your body's going to use shit to rebuild your cells. And that's like, how can you be healthy and how can you thrive in the world if all you're giving your body is crap to rebuild yourself with? Your body's going to be made up of crap. So that's why I said like, look at food as a life source. Food is a thing that is living, that has energy and has an essence. And when you eat it, you are absorbing that and it's becoming who you are. You become the essence of the thing that you ate. So that's why I say quality matters. You want to get the best quality thing. But if we're talking about just steak, steak is an amazing nutrient, so uh, nutrient dense food for us, for our consumption. But if you're getting this big corporate farmed cow that's been miserable and confined and cramped up and eating grain and corn and, you know, cow parts in a lot of these farms, which is absolutely disgusting. But it, a cow is supposed to eat grass. So the difference between if you eat a, gra a cow who was happily raised out on a pasture eating grass and thriving, and then all of a sudden one day he's dead and you eat the meat. Or if you go hunting and you kill a wild animal and you get that meat, that he didn't have the stress and the negative energy surrounding his entire existence. Where if you look at these uh, factory farms where all these animals are in just such nasty, gross conditions, the essence of that meat, the energy that you get from that meat is going to be so different. So that's why I say, like, let's pay attention to the quality of the of how the animal was raised and how it lived and what it ate. You are what you eat. Like I said, everything you put in your body becomes your body, but also everything that goes into that cow's body or that animal's body becomes its body. You are what you eat. You are also what you eat eats. So quality matters in that sense where it's just, it's this, the cycle of life. Like we know, we know these things and we just kind of brush them off and get into like, nope, got to be productive, got to do the thing, got to buy this box of something that someone told me was healthy. Like let's step back. Let's look at the big picture. What are you using to fuel your body and to become your body? Because it's so much more than just energy. It's so much more than, oh, it's lunchtime, got to eat something. That's not an excuse. If you're better off not eating than eating junk food. Because that way, like, at least you're, letting, you're lowering the inflammation and you're allowing your body to clean things out and take care of you. You can go so much longer without eating than you think you can. Especially if the quality of food you're eating is better. The problem, and so the problem here, there are going to be some exceptions real quick, because I want to say, eat plants and animals. If it comes in a package, for the most part, don't eat it. And there's, I mean, there's some exceptions. Some things are going to come in a package. You can buy a bag of spinach, but don't, but like an energy bar that you buy in a package, you're like, what the hell's in it? What is, that thing doesn't have an essence. That doesn't have life. A box of cereal, even when it's marketed as being healthy. You look at the bright yellow box of Cheerios. It's just screaming, eat me, like come buy me, put this in your body. And then it says, you have a big heart on it. It says like, this food is proven to lower your cholesterol. No, it's not. That's bullshit science paid for by General Mills to trick people into thinking that they need this highly processed cereal grain. But it's based on bad science. And that's, that's as much as I want to get into it right now because, like I said, this is something I can, I can rant about and get into. And there, I will, will get into more detail about sort of the, the people controlling our food. But in the meantime, let's just stay away from them. Control your food yourself. Pay attention to who's making your food and what their intentions are. Even things that are marketed as being healthy aren't always healthy. There's, there's a time and place for things. Like, I love to eat hummus. It's a great example of a healthy food. But you go into the supermarket and you find a package of hummus. Pretty sure the label's probably going to tell you it's healthy. They love doing that. For the most part, a good rule of thumb is if something tells you how healthy it is on the package, they're covering something up. If it's real food, you don't see, you know, a steak in the supermarket that says how healthy it is. 
You don't see pork chops to say how healthy they are. Broccoli doesn't tell you. There's a reason for that. You just know this is good, healthy food. If you find a box of some highly processed thing with a bunch of ingredients that you can't pronounce, but it says it's healthy, you know, they probably have, like I said, these companies all have their own scientists developing things to make it um, addictive to you. They also are developing ways to convince people that it's good for you to eat. So you buy the package of hummus in the supermarket because you think, oh, hummus is healthy. It's olive oil and garlic and tahini and chickpeas. But they're not using olive oil. They're using some blend of oils, um, you know, they call it vegetable oil or but it's mostly like soybean oil and canola oil and all this crap. They're using probably shitty garlic that they, you know, shipped in from China and they're using, you know, low quality chickpeas and low quality um, tahini. And, it's, and they're probably adding sugar, especially if it's flavored. They're adding, it's so hard to find anything that doesn't have vegetable oil and sugar in it. And that should be like, step number one, stop eating vegetable oil and sugar. If it has vegetable oil in it, if it has sugar in it, throw it out because you do not want to put that in your body. It's inflammatory, it's poison, and it causes disease. So be careful. Even the things that are marketed as being healthy aren't healthy. Take control, make it yourself. Get organic chickpeas, get organic tahini, get good quality olive oil, you know, salt, pepper, use good quality ingredients is the point. Um, I forget what I listed there, so I don't know if I forgot something, but the point is make things yourself, control the things that go into your body. Sooner or later, your health is gonna be your number one concern. Let's make it right now. Let's not wait until you're sick and in pain and dying and it's all you can think about and you have to spend all your money on trying to stay alive. Let's spend your money now and spend your time and resources on fueling yourself with nutritious, nutrient-dense, delicious, quality food. So I know I, I, this is something, I get so worked up about this, I get so excited about this, but I, ha I just wanna make sure I'm staying on topic because I can just rant all day. Um, so let's focus on some of the, the points here. Eat plants and animals, the best quality that you can. So that should be your main takeaway. And like I said, ideally, like get rid of sugar, get rid of vegetable oil, get rid of words you can't pronounce, get rid of packages where the ingredient list looks like a paragraph, especially a paragraph of words you can't pronounce. That's just, that's trash. Plants and animals as minimally processed as you can. Every time somebody touches your food, it's most likely becoming less healthy. So that's a way to look at it where if something has to go through, you know, it's it's, far, it's grown at a farm, then it's picked, then it's processed, then it's ground down, then it's, you know, things are taken out of it. So you, you take sprouted grains of wheat, which is, you know, probably not the healthiest thing, but you can live with it, versus like flour, where it's, it's ground down and refined and they're just take, they're taking out all the vitamins and the fiber and they're just keeping you know, a little bit of like the starchiness so that your bread ends up coming out like a loaf of bread. And then they're adding other things in. So it's like, so okay, so they enrich it with vitamin K and vitamin A and vitamin B. And like, where are they getting those from? Why are they, where are they stripping away from that? What nutrients aren't you getting? So whole foods is important. Minimally processed, minimally touched. Everybody who touches it is going to add something or take something. So they're adding preservatives, they're adding sugar, they're taking away the healthy nutrients. They're putting things in so it doesn't go bad. We want food that goes bad. We want real food with a life force and an essence. Take control. Prepare your own food. If it comes in a package, it's probably bad for you. Throw out the stuff in packages, buy ingredients, and with those ingredients, make meals. Plants and animals, fruit, vegetables, meat. I hope that's helpful. I know I'm all over the place. It's hard for me to keep track of where we're at, but this is something I'm incredibly passionate about. I really hope it's important to you, and I hope that you make it important to you if it's not, because this is this is the thing that's gonna change. It's not going on some diet for six weeks isn't gonna change your life. Stopping eating poison is going to change your life. Giving yourself the best quality, real food all the time is what's gonna change your life. So please, Take this advice, take it to heart, 
I think this is going to make such a difference in your life and I want to see everybody thrive. I want to change the world because I'm tired of looking around and seeing people who are sick everywhere. Sick shouldn't be the normal. Sick should be the exception. Healthy, thriving people should be the norm. And that's what we want. So let me know if you have questions. Eat real food. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll be back next week with your next habit that's going to change your life.